Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss how to find the start node of a cycle in the linked list. So this problem is usually asked as a follow up for detecting a cycle in the linked list. So I have made a separate video on how to detect a cycle in the linked list. Please watch that video before proceeding to this one. So in this problem, we are given the head of a linked list and we have to return the node where the cycle begins. If there is no cycle, return null. So we are given this linked list, A is the head of the linked list. And we see here there is a cycle of six nodes, D, E, F, G, H, I. So the cycle starts from D. So D is the start node, which we have to return. So if there is a cycle in the linked list, return the start node of the cycle. But if the linked list is such that there is no cycle, like we have here, we have four nodes A, B, C, D, and there is no cycle, then this should return null. So this is our problem statement. Now there are various methods to solve this. In this video, we'll focus on two methods on how to find the start node of the cycle. So the first method is very intuitive. So in this method, we'll make use of extra space. So we'll create a hash map and we'll traverse the linked list starting from head and we'll store all these node addresses in the hash map. If we reach null means we have traversed the entire list. So there is no cycle. We should return null. But if the node address is already present in the hash map, we need to return that node. So if we traverse from head. We'll check if A is present in the hash map. It is not present. So we'll insert A in the hash map. Then we'll come to B. Since B is also not present, we'll insert B. Then we come to C. C is also not present. So we'll insert C, then we come to D, D is not present in the hash map, we'll insert D. The next of D is E, E is also not present, we'll insert E, then F will also insert, we'll insert G also, then comes H, H is also not present, so we need to insert H in the hash map, then I will insert I also in the hash map, then comes D. So D is already present in the hash map. So this means we are visiting D for the second time. So whenever we visit a node for the second time, it means that that node is the starting node for the cycle. So the return value for this cycle will be node D. But if our linked list something like this A, B, C, D. So here D is pointing to null. So we'll start from A, we'll insert A in the hash map, then we'll insert B, then we'll insert C and then we'll insert D and then we reach null. So if we come to null, it means the end of the list has been reached. So there is no cycle. So we can return null. So time complexity of this method is order of N and the space complexity is also order of N. So this method makes use of extra space to find the start node of the cycle. Now there is an efficient method than this, which doesn't use any extra space. Let's have a look at that method. So the second method is known as Floyd cycle detection algorithm or tortoise hair algorithm. So in this method, we'll take two pointers, slow and fast. Slow pointer will move by one node and fast pointer will move by two nodes. Both the slow and fast will start from head of the linked list. So in my previous video, we discussed how we can detect a cycle using Floyd cycle detection algorithm. So in that video, we discussed that, that we can take two pointers slow and fast. We'll move fast by two nodes slow by one. And if at any node slow and fast becomes equal, that means a cycle is present and we can return true. So now some of the code will be common, which we have discussed in the previous video. So now the extra part is inside this if statement. So initially slow and fast both are at head will move fast by two and slow by one. So we have this while loop which we run till fast is not equal to null or fast is not the last node. So here we move fast by two nodes. So we are doing fast equal to fast next next. So fast is at A, fast next is B and fast next next is C. So fast comes at C. 
and then we do slow equal to slow next so slow will come at b then we check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal we come to the next iteration and now again we move fast by two nodes so two nodes ahead of c is e so fast will come at e and now we move slow by one node so slow comes at c now we again check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal now we again need to move fast by two nodes so, so two nodes ahead of e is g so fast will come at g and now we move slow by one node so slow comes at d we again check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal so now in the next iteration we again move fast by two nodes so fast will come at i and slow will come at e we again check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal so in the next iteration we move fast by two nodes so two nodes ahead of i is e so we can see here the cycle will again repeat because next of i is d and next of d is e so fast will come at e and then we move slow by one node so slow will come at f we again check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal in the next iteration fast will move by two nodes so fast will come at g and now slow will move by one node so slow will also come at g so now we check if slow is equal to fast so now both are pointing to g now we come in this if statement and we move slow to head so slow will now be pointing to a so this means a cycle is present in the linked list so when slow and fast both are equal that can only happen if the cycle is present so in my previous video we also proved that why slow and fast will meet if there is a cycle so now if slow is equal to fast we'll move slow to head and now we run a loop till slow is not equal to fast so now we need to move both pointers by one so now in the next step slow will come to b and fast will come to h in the next iteration we again check if slow is equal to fast so these are not equal now slow will come to c and fast will come to i we again check if these are equal so these are not equal in the next step slow will come to d and now fast will also move ahead and come to d so now slow is equal to fast so this while loop will break and will return the pointer to slow so we will return the node d so this is our cycle start node so in the algorithm once the cycle is detected we move one pointer to head of the linked list and then we move both pointers by one until they meet when they meet that will be the cycle start node now the algorithm is simple but we need to also understand the proof why is this distance equal basically we are saying that this distance abcd is equal to the distance ghid because slow and fast initially met at g so let's look at the proof that why have we done this that we have moved one pointer to head and then moved both the pointers by one node so let's say this is a linked list and this is the loop of the linked list and this is the head of the linked list let's say this distance is x and this point is the start node of the cycle and let's say these nodes meet at this point so this is the first meeting point when slow becomes equal to fast so we initially said that slow will move by one node and fast will move by two nodes and let's say this distance is y and this distance which is the remaining is l minus y where l is the length of cycle so one distance is y and the other distance is l minus y so let's find out the distance covered by slow pointer so first slow pointer will come to the start node of the cycle so this distance it needs to cover so this is x then let's say it makes n rounds of the cycle so n1 into length of the cycle plus y 
so to reach this meeting point it needs to cover this much distance so d is the distance covered by slow pointer now if we calculate the distance covered by fast pointer so so the speed of the fast pointer is twice than that of slow pointer so it will cover distance which is twice of the slow pointer so it will cover distance of 2d so the distance covered it will be x so it would need to reach the start node of the cycle so this distance is x then let's say it makes n2 revolutions of this cycle plus it needs to reach the meeting point so n1 is rounds of cycle by a slow pointer and n2 is rounds of cycle by fast pointer so it is not necessary that they will meet in the first round in the cycle so they can do many rounds but eventually they will meet so now if we solve these two equations so we can equate this value of d here so if we solve this we'll get this formula so if k is some constant x is equal to kl minus y so which means that if we start a node from this point which is the head of the link list so if we keep one pointer here and if we keep one pointer at the meeting point so if we make both of these pointer move by one they will meet at the start node of the cycle because we can see here x is equal to kl minus y so this is the distance x and this distance is l minus y so if k is 1 this will become l minus y if k is 2 this will become 2l minus y if k is 3 so it becomes 3l minus y so pointer 2 will make 3 rounds so after 3 rounds it will come here and then we subtract y distance so subtract y distance from this point will come to the meeting point so that is why when both the slow and fast pointers meet inside the cycle we keep one pointer at the head and then move both pointers by one because they will meet at the start node of the cycle so that we have proved here now once we have understood the algorithm and the proof let's have a look at the implementation all the source code that i have shown is available in my github repository link of which is available here and as well as in the description let's have a look at the code so in the main function i have created this link list so starting from a i have created nodes till i then i join nodes i and d so i create a cycle then i have this function start node cycle 1 and start node cycle 2 so these are the two methods that i have discussed and i pass them the head of the link list so let's check this function start node cycle 1 so in the function start node cycle 1 i create an unordered set i traverse the link list for each node i check whether its entry is already present in the unordered set if it is present that means i am visiting the nodes for the second time so this is the start node of the cycle if that is not the case i would insert the node in the unordered set and i traverse the link list if i reach end of the link list that means there is no cycle so i return null in the second method start node cycle 2 i keep two pointers slow and fast both both are initially pointing to head of the link list i move fast by two nodes and slow by one when slow and fast becomes equal that means the cycle is found so i move one pointer to head of the link list and then move both the pointers by one until they meet so they will meet at the starting point so when slow and fast becomes equal i return the slow pointer which will be the starting node in this example it would be node d if fast becomes null that means end of the list has been encountered so there is no cycle so i return null so i print the output in the main function and then i create a second example in which there is no cycle so i create the link list a b c d so for this link list the output should be null because there is no cycle so no start node let's see the output of this program so for the link list 1 there is a cycle and the start node is d for the link list 2 there is no cycle so both the methods displayed that there is no cycle in link list 2 so this problem is also available on lead code as question number 142 link list cycle 2 i have submitted the same code here and it is 
success so this is an important question in terms of interview and the proof why the freud cycle detection algorithm works is also important so please go through that again and if there are any doubts or questions please leave in the comment section below so that was all for this video if you like my content please do like share and subscribe to my channel it really motivates me to make more such content and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off